guys, what's up? In this video, I want to talk about the recent update that Figma introduced regarding multiple editing capability. So again, it's amazing. I'm actually demoing this on Figma's own playground file, and I'm going to share the link so you can actually go ahead and play, play along with it. But just so you know, you can actually basically just select multiple objects together and do actions on them. So what does that mean? So for example, here I have an object selected, like for example, this one. I, let's say, want to change the size here. Now, previously, what I used to do was I actually used to select them all by pressing command or shift and stuff along those lines. And then I used to do something like this. And I could have done that as well. I mean, that was still possible. But now what Figma has introduced, you can basically just select one object and you can click this button at the top or you can press command uh, command option A or control alt A to actually select the matching objects and you can rotate it, you can change the color, so on and so forth. So again, that's amazing. Secondly, you can actually do some other things as well. Like for example, we can select the highlighted shapes below and then press and then press and hold the shift key. So for example, I'm gonna select this. With the shift key still pressed, either click and drag on the, bot on, on the frame. So I'm gonna select all of them. And as you can see, it's automatically going to detect that I've selected the second one. So now I can actually increase it and the second one is gonna increase in all places. Similarly, I can select the red one and you have the red one selected. Even before that, if I just select this and press shift, if I'm just pressing shift, it's very subtle, but you can actually see that it's detecting that I've selected the third element here. Similarly, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna press shift. As you can see, it's also detecting that I've selected this element. What if I actually rename it to item five? So I'm gonna press shift and it's no longer going to work. So why is it working? Well, it's not detecting the layer order because obviously that would mean that Figma is too smart, but it currently isn't, apologies Figma. It's just basically just detecting uh, the object based on the layer that you have selected. So I'm just gonna press shift. And as you can see, it's gonna highlight all of the item four layers as well that you can see in some of the other places. Similarly, what we can do is we can select both shapes in the first frame. Like for example, I'm gonna select both of these, then choose an alignment option from the design. So we're gonna, let's say, say that it's gonna be aligned to the center or, or something along those lines. To align objects to the respective frames, press and hold the shift key when choosing. So if I press shift, and then if I, let's say, align it to the right, to the left, to the bottom, to the top, something amazing happens. So previously, we just had, for example, alignment, we used to align things like this. If I wanted to align it, align these two things to the object itself or the containing parent, I used to group them together, then I used to move them around like this, for example. But now I can basically just have them ungrouped. I can press shift. And now, as you can see, if I just have both of these selected, I can press shift. As you can see, these icons at the top change based on the shift that I've selected. And now I can actually align them to the frame that exists, which is pretty amazing. I can do the same thing here, obviously. And I can also combine it. I can press command option A, I can press shift, and I can say that all of these should be aligned to the left or to the right or to the center, so on and so forth. So again, multiple combinations of every single thing, which is pretty amazing. Similarly, we have, again, transformations. I think this should be pretty straightforward. Obviously, if I'm gonna select, let's say, uh, these shapes, I'm gonna transform them. Those transformations are gonna happen with the made changes, mixed values when overridden. So again, when we are overriding these values, as you can see, these values are overriding based on their original uh, spacing positioning. Very similarly, if I was to, let's say, select or just select this and press command option A and I increase it in size, not all of them are going to be the same size, but they're going to scale with respect to their current size. So I think that's what they're trying to actually show us here. Let's talk about reparenting nesting fl nested flame. So I have these three elements selected, select the three blue, blue rectangles, and then I'm going to press shift and click on the matching rectangles. Then while holding the shift, click on the matching rectangle. So I'm gonna press shift and I'm gonna press shift. And then I'm gonna drag the rectangles here. And as you can see, all of these are gonna go into their nested frames. Actually, even before even before pressing, pressing, let's say shift, we can just press command option A and then we can just go ahead and actually drag them. And as you can see, that's gonna move them into the nested frame. So you don't necessarily have to do it the way that Figma is telling you based on the things that you've actually learned. You can go ahead and do it based on your own. Very similarly here, they're asking us to multi-edit, copy and paste. So select each of the shapes below while holding shift key, press command C and control C to copy or control C. So I'm gonna press uh, all of these. I'm gonna press command C. I'm gonna go here 
select the frames, I'm going to go here and I'm going to press command V. Now, as you can see, even the copy pasting is actually happening at an individual level. I mean, this honestly is insane. Let's talk about some other things. So we have some text here. I'm going to press command option A to select all of them. I'm going to go ahead and actually <clears throat> press enter to edit them. And as you can see, I can edit them and it's amazing. Very similarly, we go to the multi edit auto layout. So we're going to select one of the shapes here where we're going to press command option A. We're going to move its positioning and it's going to change its positioning based on wherever we exactly want it. But this may actually mess it up slightly because as you can see, I, I can be at the top, completely at the top. But if I press right, 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 based on where these positions were and where they are, these positioning may mess around. Like as you can see, this is the first one. Now this became the second one. So this is not always reliable because again, the auto layout positioning may differ based on how it's actually laid out. So that's that. <clears throat> Very similarly, we can talk about this one. So we're going to select a variant in the component by its uh, right by its title and press the Q key. We're going to select it. We're going to press Q and it's automatically going to select uh, all of the elements and we can obviously resize it. We can press enter. We can change the text. Sorry, I forgot to press Q again and I, I can just, let's say just change the text, so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing is in multi, you can place new elements. So obviously I can paste new elements. I understand that. So I can select them. I can duplicate them so I can paste elements. Very similarly, if I just press Q to select the different frames, I can just go ahead and insert an element. Now this is not about selecting an object and then updating it. I can just press a variant. And if I have Q select Q pressed, it's going to select all of the instances within this particular component or sorry, all of the variants within this component. And I can just insert some objects. Like for example, if I wanted to insert this, I don't know, I, I don't have any of these selected, but you get the idea. I can insert an icon, let's say if it's needed. Well, actually, let me just go ahead and insert an icon. So I'm going to say left and hopefully I have an icon that's going to come up from one of my libraries. There you go. We have something coming from untitled. So I'm going to press command X to just cut it. I'm going to press Q and I'm going to press command V and here we have the icon. I'm going to press command D and we're going to move it on the right and we can flip it as well. So again, pretty amazing stuff. Very similarly, we can also multi edit components. So I can select this. I can press command option A. I can create a component out of it. And as you can see, we have a component and all of these things are now replaced with instances of the larger component. Pretty insane and remarkable stuff, honestly speaking. Then let's talk about some of these things in based on common use cases. So we can obviously multi edit the header. So here is our header. Let's just go here. We can just select the logo. I'm going to press command option A. We can increase the, the logo size slightly. We can increase the height of the header. Very similarly, I can say that this height is going to be slightly larger. We're going to go to the footer. We're going to say this footer should be, let's say somewhere here. I'm going to press enter to select the elements inside. I can press shift. And I can say that these things should be centered within the footer and stuff along those lines. I'm, I'm guessing you pretty much understand it. Very similarly in the presentation notes, uh, we can obviously change any of the text. I'm going to press command option A. Maybe I just want to move all of these to the right. Uh, we can go ahead and do that and maybe just slightly above the edge and stuff along those lines. We have this particular shape. We can select the shape. We can say the shape probably needs to be here. So I mean, you get the idea that there are pretty awesome use cases. Similarly, we can multi edit for smart animate prototypes. So what we can do is we can select the first frame. So let's select the first frame here and press shift space bar to play the prototype animation. Then we can select one of the pendant lights to use multi edit to scale them both up. So as you can see, we have these lights, which looks pretty amazing. And now we can select, let's say both of these both of these lights. So I'm going to press command option A to select them. And I'm going to say that the size is going to increase. But now, as you can see, it's going to scale proportionately. So again, that can actually be done. I can very similarly do the blobs thing as well. I can, let's say, press command option A. I can scale them like this. And pretty, I mean, pretty uh, straightforward stuff that you would normally expect, but it's insane. The amount of value that Figma is providing with these, um, these may seem like little updates, but these honestly aren't real little updates. These are amazing, amazing updates. Very similarly, we can go to the multi edit the titles of the card component variants. We can just say press Q to select them. And we can just start typing. As you can see, that works. Copy the at 
to cart instance, select a variant, press Q, then paste. Um, I think they're just asking us to paste this particular thing. We're just gonna press Q and we're gonna press Command Shift V, or sorry, Command V and, sorry, Q again and Command V. And as you can see, we can paste it. Very similarly, we can press Q at the top level. So I'm gonna select, actually I can just press Command Option A and then paste it here if you wanna paste it here. So I mean, it completely depends on what you exactly wanna do. Similarly, we can select all the pricing and rename them. I mean, I'm guessing you already know that. I can rename them to this, this is going to be the price. So I'm just renaming the layer names here. I'm not actually changing the value. And I've already talked about components already. If I was to select the results layer, select the results layer and select matching layer. So I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna obviously now go at the top and select it just so we're doing it. I'm gonna create a component out of it. Here's the component and all of these are now replaced with instances. We can also do the same thing with the footer. I don't know, I'm so addicted to pressing shift and then selecting all of them. I am gonna probably have to develop a habit to actually do this, the command option A thing but now it's such, such, such amazing stuff. So definitely do check this file out. I think it's I think it's a gold mine. I think this feature is insane. It's gonna improve your workflow by, I don't know, 10X. Amazing, amazing stuff, Figma, props to you.